Number one, the pictures show points on a unit circle labeled A, B, C, and D. Which point is the point for cosine of pi over 3, comma, sine of pi over 3? So we're looking for a pi over 3 angle, um, which again, half of the unit circle or the top half, just half of it would be pi because the full distance around is 2 pi. So we're looking to split pi into thirds. And that's the angle that we're looking for. And so that's going to be B. So this is one third of the way. So if we did this and then we um, took that, we could move that um, around this three times. And then went to each of these parts. It would fit in there three times. So that is um, pi over three. So B is the one we're looking for. This one is more like pi over six. Um, this one is 11 pi over 6, and this one um, is 5 pi over 3. Number two, for which angles is the cosine positive? Select all that apply. So when we're talking about cosine, remember that cosine goes with the x values. Um, because it goes with the adjacent side, right? So if we've got an angle that's being formed like this, um, this adjacent side is always going to be the x coordinate. And so we're looking for where is where are the x values positive? So here are your positive x values. So we don't want to be looking at any angle that falls in the second or third quadrant, but if it falls in the first or the fourth, um, then that one will have a positive cosine. So zero is going to be here. That's going to be a positive cosine. Five pi over 12. So um, pi would be 12 pi over 12. So I like to kind of convert them into the same denominator. So this is 12 pi over 12. Pi over two. So one half of 12 is six. So this is six pi over 12 would be um right here at like the 90 degree or pi over two angle. So five pi over six is gonna be here. It's gonna fall in the first quadrant. So that's gonna have a positive cosine value. Now we're in um, pi over sixes. So if we think of one pi over six, that's the same as six pi over six. So five pi over six is just before that. So that's gonna be in the second quadrant that has a negative X value or a negative cosine value. Um, pi over four. So pi over two is gonna be two pi over four, right? So this is two pi over four. Um, pi would be four pi over four. So three pi over four is gonna be between those two, halfway between two pi over four and four pi over four, that's the second quadrant. Then five pi over three. Um, so this would be three pi over three. All the way over here would be six pi over three. And so five pi over three is gonna be right before six pi over three. So one pi over three angle before it. Um, so here's 5 pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant. That's going to have a positive cosine value. Number three, mark two angles on the unit circle whose measure satisfies that the sine equals negative 0.4. So sine of theta, remember, is going to be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, or when we're in the unit circle, that opposite side is always the y value over the radius, which is one. Um, so in the unit circle, the radius is always one. So that means that this sine value is equal to our y coordinate. So our y coordinate in this case is negative 0.4. So remember um, that this whole thing is a radius of one. So if we count this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dashes. So each one of these dashes is um, 0.4. So we need our y coordinate to be negative 0.4. So I'm just going to go down to the negative 0.4 line and then go over until I hit the circle. So now I know that this y coordinate is negative 0.4. And then I can do that again um, 
for this side, so negative 0.4 over to the circle. So those two um, angles have a sign of negative 0.4. And if you wanted to like draw the angle in here too, right? So you're starting at the positive x-axis. So this one is one of the angles and then um, could go backwards, okay? Or could go all the way around this way to get your other theta angle. So we'll just call this theta two and this one theta one. Number four, for which angle measures between zero and two pi is the cosine gonna be equal to zero? So remember cosine is the X value. So really on the unit circle, we're wanting to know when is the X value zero? Um, and the X value is zero when we don't go left or right at all. So that's gonna be here straight up to the unit circle and straight down to the unit circle. So this one is gonna be theta equals pi over two. And this one is gonna be theta equals three pi over two. And then what are the values of sine for these angles? Well, this ordered pair up top here um, is the ordered pair zero, one, right? And then the one down here is zero negative one since the radius all the way around this circle is equal to one. So here we'd be at zero one, here we would be at zero negative one. And then those are your sine values because your sine is equal to the y coordinates. And so if we do um, the sine of pi over two, that's gonna equal one. And the sine of three pi over two is equal to negative one. Number five, angle ABC measures pi over four. So this angle here, ABC measures pi over four and the coordinates of it are 0 0.71, 0 0.71. Okay, so those are the approximate coordinates for this pi over four angle. So the measure of angle ABD is three pi over four radians. So this, um, so this one is one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four. And what are the approximate coordinates of this one? Well, this one is just a reflection over the y-axis since this would be a pi over four angle as well. So this would flip over onto this one. So these coordinates are gonna be the same, but in the second quadrant, your x value is negative. So you're gonna have a negative 0.71 comma 0.71. So in the second quadrant, right, you have a negative X and a positive Y. And then the measure of ABE is seven pi over four. So then this one um, goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pi over four. And then that would close off with another pi over four would get us to the eight pi over four or two pi. So this has the same reference angle here. So this is a reflection. So E is a reflection of C over the X axis. So again, this is gonna have these same kind of numbers except for fourth quadrant is positive X, negative Y. So the Y value is just gonna become the opposite. So negative um, 0.71 for the Y value. Number six, in which quadrant is the value of the x-coordinate of a point on the unit circle always greater than the y-coordinate? So the x's and y's change in the quadrants, right? Um, but when would x always be greater than y? That's going to be when x is positive and y is negative because a positive, whoops, not negative one, um, because a positive number is always bigger than a negative. So that's gonna be in this fourth quadrant where the X's are positive and the Y's are negative. Name three angles in that quadrant. Um, so let's just name kind of the main angles that we look at, right? So our um, we wanna name a pi over three angle there. I wanna name a pi over four angle in that quadrant. And I want to name a pi over six angle in that quadrant. 
So when we look at this, remember this right here is two pi. So I like to write this with a denominator the same as the angles that I'm looking for. So two pi is really six pi over three. So if I go back one pi over three, that's gonna give me this angle of five pi over three. If I wanna look at pi over fours here, two is really eight over four. So eight pi over four. So if I go back one pi over four angle from that, that's gonna be seven pi over four. And then for six, for um, pi over six angles, two is 12 over six. So 12 pi over six back one pi over six would be the 11 pi over six angle. So five pi over three, seven pi over four, and 11 pi over six are all angles in that um, fourth quadrant. Number seven, Lynn is comparing the graph of two functions, g and f. The function g is given by g of x equals f of x minus two. Lynn thinks the graph of g will be the same as graph of f, but translated to the left two units. Do you agree? Um, and no, I don't agree. Because if we were doing g of zero, so if our x is zero, that means that f is going to be the same at 0 minus 2. So this is saying that our g function at 0 will equal our f function at negative 2. Well, g of 0, so that would put our g function right here. That puts our f function, okay, right here at negative 2. So that means that the g is actually moved to the right 2, okay? So it's to the right 2 units. So remember, anytime it's inside of that function, it always kind of seems opposite of what it says. So minus two would make us think that it's going to the left two, but it's actually going to the right two.